going into my fourth year of biotechnology and economics. A lot of what we do is we look at how to take biotech products, so pharmaceuticals or energy, um, different sectors like that. How do we commercialize them and bring them to market? iGen essentially stands for International Genetically Engineered Machines. It's a pretty awesome name, condensed into those four letters. It's a competition that's held by MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology that's in Cambridge. It's an undergraduate competition based on synthetic biology. It consists of teams from all over the world. We had regional competition in Indianapolis and we presented our work there and then we went to the finals in MIT and we were competing with another 60 different schools. My role is outreach and communications. So what I do is I take something really complicated such as synthetic biology and then I filter it and convey it to different types of people, teaching them about DNA, biotechnology, so working a lot with the community and really telling them what we do and what biotechnology is. A synthetic biology is pretty much what it sounds like. It's taking a natural science, such as biology, and creating new biological parts or biological systems which aren't actually found in nature. And it uses a lot of science and engineering, so it's a combination of those, and it's a branch off of biotechnology. So it's a very new cutting edge technology. And you can do things like make your own DNA and insert it into a living organism, or you can create your own genes synthetically using chemicals, which is not obviously naturally found. So that's the whole concept around synthetic biology. Biobricks were created to, they're like pieces of Lego, and they can include one gene or a couple of genes, but you can brick them together and piece them together to make something as a whole. So biobricks are put into a library, it's a standardized library that MIT had started and they're all indexed and they're all parts so if someone is interested in looking at a gene which produces the smell of flowers for instance and they want to look that up, they can look it up really easily, it's like a library and they can use that in their organism instead of making the code themselves and figuring it out. So that's the whole movement behind biobricks. The design and lab team actually is working on a self-excising ribozyme project. It takes normal genetic engineering techniques which we use in the lab and it helps to make it more efficient. So things like making antibodies or creating insecticides or really complicated pharmaceutical drugs, this process will hopefully make that a lot easier and also make more complicated antibodies which are more difficult to make within the lab environment. We also work on human practices, and this is a lot of studies done on people's perceptions of biotechnology and synthetic biology. And finally, we have the modeling team. And the modeling team is all mathematical based. So what they do is they create parameters and understanding how do our organisms work and look at different factors associated with it and do it using calculations to look at the efficiency rates, how strong our genes are or promoters are, and looking at that data to help create next steps for us. A lot of the times we want to create different types of synthetic proteins, enzymes, and antibodies and stuff like that and that's done in vitro. So in vitro means outside of the organism and then we take our gene that we're interested in and put it into our host organism such as E. coli and make all the protein. With this competition we will be taking our self-excising ribozyme project and we will be presenting that at the regionals in the states this year. We'll also be looking at a lot of the human practices work in terms of looking at the community and understanding what their perception is towards synthetic biology, presenting those results and talking about overall what we've done in iGEM with workshops and communications. iGEM gives you the flexibility of taking an idea and going forward with it. A lot of employers really like that initiative and they really like you going outside the box and doing really new things. So a lot of the individuals who did work in iGEM or ended up doing some volunteering in iGEM ended up displaying those skills to employers later on and they were very impressed by them. Right now the synthetic biology industry is really moving forward. A lot of companies are investing a lot of money in synthetic biology. Maybe 10, 15, 20 years from now you're going to see this a lot more around you. And it's really great to be involved at the cutting edge at that moment when you see things just about to boom. So it affects a lot of industries, like pharmaceuticals, energy, agriculture, and these three industries are huge right now. Everywhere, it's always around you. So it's really encouraging to see that happen around you, that kind of research, and what kind of amazing things people are really doing in, this, in the undergraduate level.